Hello and welcome to Straight Talk. I'm Aisha Subarkash. Security around the Horn of Africa is facing tensions not seen in decades. Houthi attacks on ships in the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden is drawing in the U.S. and U.K. And a new Ethiopian-led port deal has Somalia claiming its sovereignty is under threat. All are raising risks to this crucial global shipping route. Amid this uncertainty, last week Somalia's parliament passed a defense and economic agreement with Turkey, which Mogadishu called a historic deal. The 10-year pact is set to cover everything from strengthening maritime security, financial support and to step up the fight against terrorism. Somalia, which is still battling al-Shabaab militants, also condemned a recent port deal between Ethiopia and the breakaway region of Somaliland. Turkey, which has long provided financial and humanitarian support to Mogadishu, also operates its largest African embassy and overseas military facility in the country, where it is currently providing training for the Somali National Army. And for more on the Somali-Turkish defense deal, joining me now from Abuja, Nigeria, is David Otto. He is a political analyst. And from Ankara, Elame Rije Tepecikdolu. She is an associate professor at Ankara Social Sciences University. A warm welcome to you both, and thanks for joining me on Straight Talk. So, David, what do you make of this defense deal between Turkey and Somalia? I mean, is there any significance to its timing since it's coming shortly after a port deal? between Ethiopia and the breakaway region of Somaliland? Well, well I think it's very strategic, um, uh, not just for Somalia alone, um, but I think for the regional uh, challenges that uh, Somalia faces with countries like Ethiopia. But also uh, beyond that, uh, we're talking about um, issues within the Red Sea and the clashes that we've seen very lately. I mean, for Somalia, they see this as a historic deal, as the uh, the prime minister describes it. And, and they've always seen uh, uh, Ankara, of course, Turkey as the best uh, choice, you know, in terms of defense uh, for the Somalia coastline. Uh, but um, as you rightly mentioned, um, you know, I believe that, you know, from uh, a much more uh, unseen or strategic point of view, I think, you know, what Turkey has done uh, with uh, this 10-year deal uh, to uh, provide uh, some security training, uh, provide equipment, um, you know, towards the Somali Navy. I think what they've done effectively is to kind of play the middleman, uh, to kind of cushion the tension that exists uh, between um, Ethiopia and Turkey after Ethiopia signed a memorandum of understanding to, um, you know, one, recognize, um, you know, Somaliland, the breakaway state, uh, as an independent state, but, but also, uh, you know, to occupy, uh, you know, um, I think about... Um, uh, 12 miles of the coast of uh, the Gulf of Aden uh, and possibly build a, a naval, um, you know, presence in that region. So uh, on the one hand, from, uh, you know, a Somali point of view, uh, this is a, a historic deal. It gives them that level of assurance that their integrity and sovereignty will be protected yes. uh, by a long ally. Uh, Turkey has been a very long ally of Somalia. So, uh, you know, uh, it's a multiple advantage, not just for uh, Somali, but for, also for the regional challenges that we're experiencing. So, Elan, uh, what do we know about this deal so far and how extensive will it be in terms of boosting uh, Somalia's uh, defense, especially its maritime security? Uh, well, let me first underline the fact that uh, we don't have the information on the details of the agreement because it is yet to be ratified by the Turkish parliament. Uh, but, of course, we do have some uh, information on the content, uh, especially based on the uh, of um, statements of the Somalian officials, and we know that the deal aims at fighting with terrorism, piracy, illegal fishing, uh, and smuggling, and threats from abroad. Mm -hmm. And as you have also noted, it will be in power for 10 years. Um, but allow me to also emphasize that it is a defense and economic cooperation agreement. So understandably, the focus is often on security dimension, uh, but the deal also stipulates um, cooperation in the economic domain. So, Turkey has already been involved in Somalia's security uh, landscape. Uh, you know, it has its largest uh, military training facility in Somalia's capital, Mogadishu, and Turkish Navy has been already um, involved in the uh, anti-piracy missions uh, as part of a, a UN mission um, that is very active in the region since 2009. Uh, but it also... Uh, assumes that Turkey will support 
um, the development of marine resources in the country and even prevent marine pollution uh, because the uh, people in the region they struggle from overfishing and illegal fishing activities and not always some small groups are involved in those activities but there are also some external countries including china that are involved in those illegal fishing activities and that might not seem as a big threat uh, but it is a huge problem for the coastal people because often um, they have no other alternative sources for income yes. so the deal i think extends turkey's cooperation with somalia uh, into the uh, naval forces and also stipulates um, detailed provisions on economic cooperation as well, especially with, with, with Somalia's fight with illegal fishing and armed robbery and piracy attacks in the region. So, uh, David, uh, Somalia's president, Hassan Mahmoud, uh, has said the maritime defense deal with uh, Turkey is not aimed at uh, countering Ethiopia or any other country. Is this really the case? And what do you think? I mean... What kind of a message did this deal send to Ethiopia as well as Somalia? Well, I think, you know, from a strategic point of view, uh, uh, you know, Somalia will look at it as, um, you know, some kind of a cushioning. Um, they see Turkey as, you know, an ally, big brother in the uh, international scene. Uh, Turkey is a member of uh, NATO. Uh, but of course, you know, once the deal is implemented, um, I think, you know, what it will do is, um, you know, it, it will kind of, uh, you know, place uh, Ethiopia on some kind of uh, uh, a cautious move. Because, of course, uh, but what we've got to remember is that um, Turkey is also, um, you know, uh, a friend of Ethiopia. So, you know, this is not um, supporting Somalia or, you know, giving support to Somalia against uh, the Ethiopian government. Of course, you know, we know that Turkey has supplied uh, the Barakta drones uh, to uh, the Ethiopian government yes. previously. So um, uh, it's not uh, Turkey trying to, um, you know, uh, support Somalia against Ethiopia. I think what Turkey is doing here, um, in addition uh, to the fact that it benefits in you know, about 30 percent of the Somali exclusive economic uh, zone, I think what Turkey is doing here is trying to play some kind of a mediation role uh, by, you know, supporting uh, Somalia's position. Uh, but perhaps, you know, maybe they would move further to uh, kind of have a, a bilateral discussion maybe with Turkey hosting some kind of a mediation uh, to calm the waters uh, mm -hmm. between what is existing, uh, the existing tension between um, Somalia and Ethiopia over Somaliland. So, um, you know, I, I wouldn't see it as, you know, Turkey trying to stir up, uh, you know, the, um, the existing crisis by supporting Somalia, uh, you know, through, um, you know, an economic and military pact or a defense deal. Uh, I would see it as Turkey trying to leverage uh, on its relationship that it has, not just with Somalia and Ethiopia, but also in the region, uh, to try and calm the waters down. So, Adam, another important player, the United Arab Emirates. Uh, we know that the country has played a facilitating role in brokering a deal, this um, contentious deal, let's say, between Ethiopia and the breakaway region of Somaliland. And this country is also heavily invested in the country through its Barberia uh, port. So. What are the UAE's interests in the wider region and how do you think it is viewing this latest deal between Turkey and Somalia? Well, the region is increasing international attention, that is correct. Uh, but uh, United Arab Emirates, uh, together with other um, Gulf countries, uh, they have a special interest in the region because it is in their immediate neighborhood. So they see the region um, as an area that they can assert their um, strength, political strength, diplomatic strength, and even military strength. And we always talk about um, the withdrawal of the United States from the region or its uh, the diminishing interest in the region, especially over the last decade. And some say that there will be a power gap, power vacuum. This might be filled with those Gulf states. So they have geopolitical ambitions. Uh, in the region, but there are also security concerns, of course, because maritime security in the Red Sea and also in the Indian Ocean is a huge concern for the Gulf states. And uh, we, we now witness the uh, increasing attacks of uh, Houthi rebels, especially against international vessels. So uh, the region will be uh, an increasing matter of concern for all external players, because uh, as far as I know, 30 percent of the world's trade passes through the region. So it is important for the global trade and those armed robbery and, and piracy attacks, they disrupt trade, trade activities and they disrupt um, maritime 
uh, commerce in the region. So there are also security concerns and there are also economic interests because um, you know there are only a few countries in the Horn of Africa, but Somalia uh, was a war-torn country and, and it requires infrastructure and it has energy deficits that can be filled by those uh, Gulf states. And um, in addition to uh, Somalia, Ethiopia is one of the most populous uh, countries in the region and perhaps the second largest in Africa. It is also a large consumer market for the Gulf states. Mm -hmm. And as for Djibouti, it's a very small African country, but several countries have military bases in the region because it lies uh, on the African shore of the um, Red Sea and it is it lies in the entrance yes. of Bab al Mandate Strait, so it, it's a gateway to the Suez Canal, uh, one of the busiest shipping roads uh, in terms of world trade. So, David, uh, could the waters near the Horn of Africa become the next uh, hot spot uh, for it already hosts naval bases from Turkey, China, the United States, and the United Arab Emirates? Well, I think it does seem so in practice. Um, but, you know, one would hope that, you know, the hotspot doesn't catch fire. Um, you know, of course, um, everyone wants to have uh, some kind of leverage, you know, uh, along these very important waters, you know. And, uh, uh, you know, of course, I mean, the challenge now is, you know, how that is managed. And I, this is where I think, um, you know, uh, you know, there the should be, uh, you know, some interference, uh, but, you know, an overseen. Uh, by what is ongoing within this area, you know, by countries like the African Union, sorry, by uh, uh, bodies like the African Union, mm -hmm. uh, because of course, um, you know, when we see the uh, the uh, the what I call the power tussling, um, you know, between these very important uh, straits and waters, um, then the question is, what really happens next? Of course, you know, bilateral agreements and defense and economic pact are very key, and you know, they do serve the interest of these individual states. Uh, but the question is, what about the regional stability? Mm -hmm. uh, and I think the body that is responsible for that, you know, is the African Union, which just held uh, its 37th uh, assembly in, in Addis Ababa, you know, uh, the, the country in question, you know, which, uh, of course, you know, has uh, uh, a 50-year MOU with um, uh, uh, Somaliland. So uh, th there should be uh, some leveraging uh, between the African Union and some of these member states, you know, in order for uh, some level of overseeing uh, to to occur, but it is yet, you know, to carry its weight, you know. So I'm very worried uh, that you know we could see uh, some kind of a scrambling uh, within this region, you know, which could, you know, potentially, if not uh, well managed, you know, could escalate uh, to something more, this, this, you know, um, you know, uh, sinister, you know, from a defense point of view. All right, David and Elam. Unfortunately, we'll have to leave it here. Thank you very much for joining me on Straight Talk.